Hi, this is Deb from Lithbridge Cards and Crafts. I've really been inspired by a lot of videos on YouTube where people have shown us their craft rooms, and so I thought I'd take you on a tour of mine today. In 2021, we completely remodeled this room, and on my blog, which I'll link in the description notes, you can see some before and after pictures. Rather than do a tour of every single drawer and cabinet, I've organized this video uh, by how I store different supplies in my paper crafting, and so I hope that inspires you and gives you some ideas of how you could organize your paper crafting supplies. So I'm going to start the tour in the hallway, and the first thing that you might be able to see is that there's actually uh, no door to this room. This is on the first floor of our house, and you can see as you walk in, um, that there's a sliding door wall here that leads out into our backyard and a deck. Uh, this lets in some really nice light because this is on the south side of the house. But as you can see in the wintertime, it's very white. So I made the conscious choice to have a lot of bright colors uh, for the curtains and for some of my wall hangings. As you come around the room, you'll see that over here is my desk setup. I have a big TV screen there so I can either watch movies or crafting videos or whatever uh, I'd like to watch there. I also have my uh, stamping cabinet with my die cut machine there with uh, the accessories next to it. And then I have some beautiful artwork from our garden. And as you go out that way, you can see our kitchen through there. On the wall, right as you walk in, I have a shelving unit from Stampin' Storage where I put my uh, club my um, Stampin' Up stamps and other stamps that I want to store in DVD containers and I have a little bit of a, a decorative item above there with some pencils that I use for coloring. And you'll see then that the rest of the room here is filled with cabinets that go floor to ceiling. I do have a, a ladder that's the orange item underneath my shelving unit. I have a little bit of a, a pegboard um, on the one side and that corner was very uh, large so I put a little corner unit in there to store some things like tape and staplers that you use every day on a um, for office type things and then I have a nice countertop here with my washi tape collection my book press and then finally the bookshelf right next to that sliding window my paper storage a lot of my paper comes from club scrap and so I have a shelving unit under my desk that has some of my pizza boxes uh, labeled with the kit name as well as a few empty boxes for uh, spray uh, mists and things like that that I want to work on as well as some other projects in progress. Just opposite on the other side of my desk are the rest of my club scrap kits there in those boxes and those are organized as well by year with the kit name uh, and year on them. Underneath then, these big cabinet units, these are a little less deep than the traditional kitchen cabinets uh, because this room is rather small and I wanted to make sure I had some floor space and it felt a little more open. Also wanted to install the sliding uh, window in there. And so, but these are just the right size to fit 12 by 12 papers. And so I have uh, a row of um, magazine file kind of holders for the, some of the 12 by 12 paper. That's mostly my uh, Stampin' Up! paper and other specialty papers and cardstocks. And then some loose paper over here on the end uh, with a couple of uh, binders for other items. Then above that, I have my eight and a half by 11 paper. And I have a lot of the paper is um, from Stampin' Up! And these are in job ticket holders. And so I can pull out the color that I'm interested in. And I also store the scraps uh, from that color in the envelope so that if I'm looking for a particular color, I'll be able to find that. Other paper from Club Scrap is here, organized Roy G. Biv as well. And then I have some specialty card stocks and other types of card stocks over here. I also organize my scraps, some of my scraps here. So these are my larger scraps. 
that don't fit in my other containers. And so if I'm looking for a red or an orange, I've got them organized by color with these tabs so I can find them uh, pretty quickly. The rest of my paper scraps I organize in these two uh, bins here. This is a semi-satchel bin from Art Bin. And I have in the front all of my paper scraps organized Roy G. Biv. And then I have six by six paper pads, as well as other, um, some of them are embellishments that I've already made, uh, pattern papers, and more six by six paper pads. The other scraps I have in here are long, generally long strips like this. So when I'm doing a lot of card making, I'll end up with these skinny strips and they're perfect for uh, sentiments or for other sorts of um, strips that I need just for random purposes. So I just kind of have them all thrown in here and I sort through this whenever I want to look for a paper scrap. The other things that needs a lot of organizing in a paper crafting room is embellishments. So behind uh, this cabinet here, I have one row of uh, these containers here from Craftmates. And we open these up and these hold lots of little individual embellishments. These are a pillbox style container. And so they don't open up on their own. You have to press and open them up, but I can easily see what I have uh, and I can get those embellishments out really easily. So things like brads, uh, most of my beads uh, and other sorts of eyelets and things are there. And then I have additional bins for different categories of things like felt item, other embellishments, uh, and then some other things up in the way top that I don't use very much, but I can read the labels and know what's in there. So I have three different ways that I store my ribbons and yarns. Um, the first way is for most of my yarns, I have them in these three ring binders organized by color. And when you open that up, and those are stored on my bookshelf, um, these are DMC floss holders in three ring binder protector pages. And so I can easily uh, flip through these and find different yarns uh, and things that I want to be using in my project. I also have these uh, super satchel uh, bins from Art Bin. And these I also organized by color. So these are my colored ribbons. And I can open these up and easily see my different ribbon spools uh, in here. And some of my spools were too large to fit. So I bought these smaller spools and just spooled the ribbon on there um, in there. And in some cases I could cut down the cases as well, but the Stampin' Up! ribbons uh, fit really nicely in here, the new sizes that they have, uh, the more modern sizes. And so I was able to put all of those ribbons in there and could see them really easily. Finally, things that don't fit on a spool or in my binder, usually little scraps of ribbon like this, um, or some of my favorite ones that I wanna use maybe for inspiration that I wanna use right away. I put in this apothecary jar and that sits on my desk so that I can uh, see the ribbon, which I think is beautiful, and also use it more easily. Give you an overall view of uh, this cabinet here. Um, you can see that the art bin smaller satchels fit on that top row. And then I have a variety of different sized ones that fit below. So these two have my ribbons. These are my re-inkers. These are some of my uh, stamping and glitter supplies, and these are my embossing powders, and these are quilling supplies. So I've selected a variety of containers that fit the types of supplies I need, and they stack really nicely and are very easy to pull out when I need to use them for a project. I have a few different methods to store my die cutting materials. So on my bookshelf here, those skinny binders have dies in them. And so if we take a look at one of those sitting here, this is the letters and word uh, version, but there are um, thick magnet sheets here that are, have a cardstock backing on them. And I can put all of my dies on here. And I label them sometimes on the front here with a piece of washi. Some are labeled on the back. It just sort of depends on what I was doing at that particular uh, time. But this is really convenient because I can 
um, flip through them, see what I want, and they are real easy to get to and get at. Um, this particular set's quite large, so sometimes there's a little bit of flipping off, but these are really sturdy on here. My other method that I've been really using a lot lately are magnet uh, boards. So on all of my cabinets now, on most of the doors, I have put magnet sheets uh, from Stampin' Storage, and I've organized my dies uh, generally by categories that make sense to me. So this is the rectangle door, and I know that those are rectangles. This door here are all my circle shape dies, so I know the circle shapes are here. And so I'm able to kind of open these up and find what I need really easily. It also makes putting the dies away easy because I know, for example, there's one missing here, so I'll need to go looking for that. Um, these are really easy to get at if you don't want to use your hands to get them. I just have a little um, magnet here, a neodymium magne magnet, and they just snap right off. And then I can put it right back on there. I also have some thicker dies. Um, and I have those in these uh, underneath the cabinets here in a semi satchel unit from Art Bin as well. And so these are organized by different categories. And I can take out the bin that I'm interested in and sort through those dies. I also have. Can see all the doors down here have um, these units here but i also have some long uh, skinny dies as well as some long thick dies and they fit really nicely above the 12 by 12 paper there was a little slender slot left over um, and so that was just perfect for those so i keep those in that area so i store my punches in these drawers um, this allows me to have really easy access to all of them and i can see them all um, but it also kind of hides them away because those are really awkward to store. I do have uh, too many punches, so one of the things that I've started doing is uh, labeling them on the side with when I've last used them. Uh, these particular ones by stamping up, I've also started to put like the shape on the side so I can see what the shape is more easily. Uh, they definitely store, I can easily grab any one of them without rifling through the stack this way, uh, but the pictures of them are on the Front, so that makes it they're too high to do uh, that with the larger punches. So I have two drawers of punches. And this drawer is not completely filled, so it has a few other uh, things in it as well. For stamp storage, I utilize a couple of different methods. Um, for a lot of my stamps, what I used to do for all of them was put them into binders like this, three ring binders with page protectors. I have the index sheet on the front, and as I flip it over, there's a piece of laminated cardstock that has my stamps on the back. And I can just peel those off and stick them right to my uh, mounting blocks. I also have my newer stamp storage system is to have bins that have these um, sleeves and cardstock, and I put the stamps in there. And I really like methods where I can kind of flip through and see things, and I can do that pretty easily there. The other storage system I have is the shelving unit. So this is where I have uh, mostly my Stampin' Up! stamps, but I like how I can see the different uh, stamps on the index there. And the green marker on these indicates that there is a die that coordinates with that that's inside that uh, containing box. I do have some empty ones here because I'm actually looking at putting some of my other stamps that I use most frequently here because I do find myself really going to this shelving unit quite often uh, to look for stamps. And then finally, I still have a lot of wood mounted stamps. And so those are in this stamping unit here from, it was uh, from Stampin' Storage. They don't make this one any longer. This is a, a real old one that I have. I've had this for probably about 15 years. Um, but there are uh, 11 by 14 picture frames where the stamps sit in there and I can just pull those out. And I generally know where all of the different types of holidays or types of stamps I'm looking for are since I've had these stamps for quite a while. And I can open those up, scroll through and decide which one I want to use today.
So finally, I wanted to give you a tour kind of of the area where I do the most of my daily work here. Uh, my die cutting machine is right next to my desk. I use it uh, nearly every project I make. And the doors here are also covered in magnets. And what I've used these for mainly are pieces that I'm storing uh, while I'm working on a project or to make sure I can put things away if I'm in the middle of something. I also have all of the different plates that go along with the die cutting machine here, the extra embossing plates and the embossing mats, as well as my stamp positioner, which I use that quite frequently as well. In this box, I keep different projects in as I'm working on them. As we go up to the desk surface, I have my most commonly used tools here. So I have my uh, paper piercer, cutting knives, scissors, bone folders, all those sorts of things, as well as washi tape that I use for attaching die cuts to uh, my paper when I'm running it through the die cutting machine. I also like to have a uh, loose ribbon here. So my ribbon scraps go into that apothecary uh, container and that way I can um, have little scraps of ribbon that if I'm looking for just a tiny piece, I can use that from there. I really like pens and markers. So those are right in the center there and they're categorized with the different types that I have so I can easily get to them and find all my markers. I have some of my uh, journals and other types of paper here um, so that I can do some different projects. And then I have right over here, I have my uh, die, my stamp inks. So these are the ones that I use most frequently. Uh, and that's a container from Stamp and Storage that fits just perfectly there. I also have my ATG tape guns and I like to use the quarter inch and the half inch size. So I have one of each there. So depending on the type of project, I can select the tape gun that I want. I also have a power supply there. If I wanna do uh, embossing, I can do that here. I also have the charging cables for my computer or my iPad. And I have a stand for my iPad if I wanna use that for anything while I'm working. And then directly next to my desk, I then have this Alpha shelving unit here. And this unit is adjustable in that I can put different size uh, depths of baskets here. These are the ones that work for me. So you can have up to um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the shallow drawers, or you can mix and match and have different types of um, drawers in there. So I have my most commonly used supplies here. So for example, in this drawer, I have uh, my rulers, they're very long and skinny, so there's a nice divider. You can divide these shelves out if you want to. And then my adhesives that I use most commonly. I also have my stamp blocks there, my blending brushes. And this is where I keep more of my stamp inks. So I have my Distress inks here, uh, Brilliance inks, which are used for non-porous surfaces. And again, the, the drawers have nice dividers that you can adjust to wherever you want. So I'm able to customize these drawers to work for me. And then in the bottom deepest drawer here, I have uh, Stampin' Up! ink pads sitting up. And then I have some of my most commonly used embellishments like pearls and crystals. Then I also have some art supplies here. So a lot of my art media are here. And the rest of my art medias are directly across from this table. And they're in bins above the paper. So I have different bins for all the different types of art medias that I use, like mists and sprays and pastels. And they're organized they're in clear containers, so I can pretty easily see what's in them. And they're not hard to pull out if I need to pull one out either. So I hope you've enjoyed this tour of my craft room. If you like the video, please uh, like it and leave a comment on what you'd like to see more of in the future. Thank you.